Today, I'm gonna give you a tour of my desk and my home office, what type of hardware I use, what's on it, and how has the transition to working from home affected me and my productivity. Hi, I'm Matt Picardle. I'm a licensed civil engineer practicing structural engineering in Southern California and I make structural engineering career videos. The first thing that you probably noticed is my giant ultra wide monitor. This is an Alienware 34 inch curved monitor. At work, I usually have two monitors, but at home I have this big curved monitor and I tend to like it more. It's similar to two monitors, but I tend to rotate my head less since everything's just right in front of me and I can customize the windows a lot better than I can when just having two monitors. So I can have them uh, triple screened, uh, one giant screen, uh, maybe 75% and 25% on the other. And if you're wondering if there's any adjustment to having a curved monitor versus a flat monitor, I honestly never even notice when I transition to it. So I tend to like it more, but it is up to you. I suggest you try them and see which one you prefer. For the computers I'm using, my work laptop is a Dell Precision 5530. And for my home computer, this is a custom uh, workstation built by my brother. And it's basically my video editing uh, computer at home. As you can see from my desk, I only have one set of keyboards and mouse. And this is what I use to control both uh, my, my custom workstation and my work laptop. So right now, right here, this is my editing workstation, my home computer. This is what I use to pretty much edit my videos at home. But if I wanna to switch to my work laptop, I use a, a USB switch, or they call it a, a sharing switch. This one, the one that I have particularly is a, a Ugreen USB 3.0 sharing switch selector. You can probably find similar products like that on Amazon. But pretty much in order to switch to my work laptop, I pretty much just press the button and that'll switch controls to my work laptop. And I just pretty much change the monitor settings, change the input. And there we go. I'm on my work laptop and using the same mouse and keyboard. The switch device, the way that works is I basically have one USB cable over here, and I have the monitor input over here attached to the power cord also. Quick tip to organize your desk for any wires that you frequently use. I tend to use these cable clips that I have attached to the side of my desk, and they basically hold your wires in place in case you need quick access to them. For my mouse at work, I still have a Logitech G600 with all the buttons, the one with the <laughs> a lot of buttons. But at home, I wanted something more wireless and the closest thing that I could find to the, the G600 was a, is a Utech Smart Venus Pro RGB. Pretty much this thing. It's pretty similar. The quality is not as great as the Logitech G600, but it's wireless and it pretty much has the same amount of buttons and it gets the work done. For my keyboard, I'm using a Logitech G513. It's basically a mechanical keyboard. I tend to like the, the feel of the mechanical keyboard and the way it types a little bit better than the traditional keyboards. Uh, it's definitely a personal preference, but what I really liked is that it came with this, this palm rest that's really comfortable. This is probably my, my favorite part of it. As you're noticing, I use a lot of computer gaming equipment, even though I don't have a single game on my home computer. Back in high school, I used to be a big gamer. You know, I used to play uh, World of Warcraft and Counter-Strike. And so that's what kind of got me introduced to all the, the gaming equipment. So that's just one of the things that I've taken back with me into my uh, professional life to help improve my productivity, such as uh, the gaming mouse. This is, <laughs> I first heard of it because of the MMOs like World of Warcraft where you'd have just a bunch of buttons. So I kind of taken that productivity and shortcuts and taking it with me to the structural engineering industry to improve my efficiency. Who said video games were a waste of time? And for my headset and microphone for work, I use a SteelSeries Arctic 7 wireless headset. I tend to like these headsets a lot because first, number one, they're wireless. And number two, I tend to wear my glasses a lot when I'm uh, in front of the computer a lot. And with regular headphones, if I'm on there for hours, these, the 
the cushions tend to uh, put pressure on the glasses and it kind of gets irritating. But with these, especially since it's supported by a headband on top, and these are really fluffy headphones, I can wear them for hours and not notice any difference or irritation around where my glasses are. And third, it has a retractable microphone and uh, that's cool just because it has a muting feature also. So I know when I'm muted, when I'm on uh, a meeting or something. So it's a really easy way for me to keep track of when I'm muted or when I'm not. Again, those are gaming headsets, but if they're good enough for gaming, they're good enough for work. Next, I have this Steel Series pretty huge gaming mouse pad. Why do I need such a big mouse pad? Well, I don't, but it feels good. With a bigger mouse pad, I like it because it kind of just gives my whole arm, that mouse pad feeling, kind of like it's on silk and it just feels a lot more comfortable. And I, and I wanna get one for the whole desk that covers the laptop too. For the other things that I have on my desk, I always have a notebook. I find it very useful for whenever I need to write something down, especially when I'm talking to someone or talking to them on the phone or just having go, going to meetings. So even with all the technology we have, I still prefer to use a handy notebook. And of course, I have graph paper. This is pretty much where I do all of my, my calcs and a lot of the sketches, especially when I'm communicating ideas uh, to other people. Just having a, a notepad to sketch on just to show your concept really quick with a, a pen or pencil uh, really helps. And my weapon of choice for my hand calcs, I use a TI-36X Pro calculator. I have uh, two of these, I have another one at work and I really like this one just because it has the square root function. You can do the fractions um, and brackets really easily on this. And I can take it with me to my licensing exam. So I definitely recommend it, especially if you're in the US and you'll eventually have to take your licensing exams also. And I also have a straight edge and black, blue, red, and green pens for communicating my sketches. So the cool decoration that I have on my desk is a MOLA structure. This is basically a structural engineering learning kit. And when I was putting this together, it kind of brought me back to when I was playing with Legos, you know, constructing the model. But what's really cool about this is a, it's a great way to explain concepts and actually see structural engineering concepts in action. So for example, you can see what happens when you have structural engineering braces during an earthquake, how it's pretty stable. Well, what happens if you don't have structural engineering inside? Let's say you take out the braces, it's still standing up, but what happens when it has uh, wind forces or an earthquake? Well, you didn't have your braces, so your building falls down. So it's a really cool way to see these concepts in action instead of just through a computer program. Like many of you, I was told to work from home, so I pretty much got all my books or a lot of my books that I really needed and just put them in a cart took them with me back to my home office and dumped them all over here. It's right here. Let me show you. As you can see, I use a lot of code books, the steel construction manual, the NDS for wood construction and the ACI 318 for concrete construction. And of course I use the ASCE 710 along with the newer version, the ASCE 716 along with the IBC building codes and the CBC building codes. And I have a lot of other references too that I've reviewed in my past videos. And below here, these are pretty much my study materials for the upcoming SE exam, my structural engineering licensing exam, hopefully in October. And now let's head over to my shelf. I got this shelf from Ikea just like my desk and my chair. I have a lot of pop figures from My Hero Academia and Avatar The Last Airbender. Matt, you're a grown man. Why do you still have cartoon figurines? Well, for me, it's always a reminder to uh, stay young at heart and not grow up too fast. Uh, a lot of the things in the world, it can get very serious. You know, my job's serious, but it's always important to take a step back and not take yourself too seriously and to always be curious. You know, once you think you know everything, that's when you lose. I have these multicolored bricks, and if you went to the ASCE Leadership Symposium, you'll know what those are. Those are basically your personality type. Uh, blue is pretty much me, a natural introvert engineer with tertiary extrovert qualities. 
And these are my personal development books. I highly believe in personal development. I think they fill in all the gaps that school doesn't teach you. And it's a great way to see what success looks like because a lot of successful people, you can see what their core values are, what they actually done to get where they are today. And those are just my hard copies. I have a lot of audiobooks that I listen to that haven't even made it to my shelf. And this is a bolt from one of my first site visits. It was a steel construction project. And one of the first things that I saw, I was like, oh man, that's a huge bolt. You know, once you design something on paper, but then when you actually see it in real life and the scale that we're actually designing to as uh, civil structural engineers. So with this whole work from home thing, like many of you, I'm working from home also. How has the transition been for me? Well, for me, it hasn't been too bad. I mean, it's been pretty seamless. I've been working with this type of monitor for a bit, so I'm, I'm, I was really comfortable with it. And just setting up the laptop and having everything plugged in, we got a great VPN network, and in order to communicate our drawings, we use uh, Bluebeam session a lot. It's basically a, a cloud for any markups that we want to pick up and get in our drawings. So it's been really easy to communicate that way and Microsoft Teams is great whenever you just want to chat with people real quick or ask them a question or even just doing video chat. Video chat seems to help a lot more with the communication. It tends to be a lot better than the phone and of course the screen sharing makes it really easy. So with all the technology that we have and all the hardware that we have, I haven't really seen a drop in productivity. I think we're just adapting and changing to the way things are right now. And if we need to, this is the way we'll continue on. But I don't think anything can really replace that one-on-one -on -one meeting that you're having with your manager or with a new engineer that you're trying to teach. And for my productivity software or apps that I use, I use Trello and I use a version of the Eisenhower matrix. It's a system where you basically have items in the important and urgent, important, not urgent, urgent, but not important and not important and not urgent. So check that out if you're looking for a organization to-do list app. For me, it works a lot better than pen and paper that what I used to do just because items become urgent and not important, especially when contractors, architects are calling you. So things do become urgent and it's a lot easier to just switch it to that than crossing it out with paper and pen. A lot of the hardware that I use, I've linked below in the descriptions. Thanks again for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. I'm also co-hosting the Structural Engineering Channel podcast. So definitely check that out if you want to learn more about the industry. I'll put that in the links below. Thank you for watching and make sure to stay safe, stay healthy, wash your hands, and I'll see you next time.